the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. God directs people by making a commitment through His Word. God's word is his bond and he commits himself to you by giving you a word. The word of God is a representation of his integrity upon your life. Hallelujah. It's important for us to understand this. That when God's word comes to you, then you have an assurance, a token of certainty that he surely will deliver as spoken. His hand will always follow where his word goes. You can find where the hand of God is moving by knowing where his word is going. Hallelujah. There's no point guessing where the power of God is. Wherever the word of God, the light, the illumination that comes from his word, that place according to scripture is the hiding place of his power. So you can know where God's power is. If God says, I am the Lord that healed thee, then you can know where the power of the Lord is channeled and you can know what dimension of operation he wants to bring and birth. So when God gave this word, for me, I think I spent a whole day just praying and crying this revelation. You know, many times, even us men of God, sometimes we can be victims of the tradition. It's good to think about the people, a good shepherd lays down his life but many times we don't take out time to believe what God said ourselves. Hallelujah. I took out time and prayed my life out on this word because I believe for myself. I believe for the ministry. And my assignment is to guide you by the spirit tonight to connect truly with what God is saying. Not just to be aware that he said it. Hallelujah. God lives in the realm of eternity please follow me tonight but his operation with men is fragmented into times and seasons are we together now god is not limited by times and seasons he dwells in the realm of eternity but according to his wisdom and his system of operation the earth is governed by the mystery of times and seasons are we together now so the program of God is spaced between times and seasons. And the Holy Spirit is mandated to supply the grace, the illumination, the empowerment that is required to maximize seasons. So the moment the word of God is released, the Holy Spirit now begins to hover around that word. And then by extension upon whoever receives that word if you do not receive the word you do not qualify for the hovering of the spirit he doesn't have any bias to an individual he's following the word so you invite him by receiving the word you don't just invite him by coming it is the spirit and the bride so if you reject the word then you will cannot attract his presence with respect to his dealings in a season is God speaking to us tonight? So we must receive his word. And then the Holy Spirit comes to energize that word. To give you the capacity. All the equippings required to make that word true. It's not new to us in this ministry. We have learned again and again. That just because God said something. Does not guarantee that it will happen. Correct? He says, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Not in your life. It is settled in heaven. It will take you engaging the relevant mysteries of the kingdom to make it in earth as it is in heaven. Are we together now? So he says, I will make you exceeding fruitful. 
I will cause nations to come out of you. He says, kings will come out of your loins. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll just walk through a few scriptures and then I'll begin to explain, give us some instructions and we pray tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 35, please, and verse 11. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, we give you God. From the rising, I want you to look at that scripture. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. So you are not confused who is speaking to you and the power that backs him he says i am god almighty then he says be fruitful mm. be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nation shall be of thee then he says and kings Kabbalah, shall come out of your loins remember psalm 112 says blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed part of the principles of dominion is that your seed must reproduce and replicate you you cannot dominate just with your mind alone you must dominate with your seed you must bring something out of you to reproduce your result this is what confirms dominion so it is in the glory of the saints that the Christ is glorified. If the saints do not rise in glory, then the Christ cannot be glorified. Are we together now? It is in the victory of the Son that the Father is glorified. Then the saints in partnership with the Holy Spirit bring glory to the Son. Are we together now? Then the dominion of the church over creation principalities and powers is where the glory of the church lies i am god be fruitful be fruitful not a suggestion be fruitful two more scriptures Psalm 1 and verse 3. Popular but powerful scripture. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper he shall be he's trying to paint the picture of a kind of man that god is describing and he's saying that man will be in the similitude of a tree that is planted by the rivers of water you know sometimes when you study the bible try to understand what god is saying he didn't say by that is planted by the rivers he said the rivers of water then he says that he brings forth his fruit in season and his leaf does not wither and so whatever he does prospers one more scripture john chapter 15 and verse 8 just give us king james if we can have amplified that would be fine john 15 and verse 8 now this scripture is very powerful the bible says when you bear or produce much fruit my father is honored and glorified so there's no point being confused as to how god is glorified it says when you bear much fruit my father is honored and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers so fruitfulness is a demonstration is a validation that you were truly mentored by god is proof that you are part of him are we together now king james says hearing is my father glorified hearing 
this is how the father is glorified when you bear much fruit and he says by so doing so shall ye be my disciples blessed be the name of the lord second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 paul was teaching on the principle of sowing and reaping and then he said something he says and god is able to make how many that means grace is in dimensions the bible didn't say god is able to make grace all grace there are different kinds of graces and i've defined for you what grace is grace is not just limited to you know unmerited access and all of that grace like love has dimensions I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above every possibility given to the saints that is only routed in Christ is called grace so anointing is grace are we together now victory is grace wisdom is grace grace is like the spiritual warehouse that hosts every tool every arsenal that has been stored for the victory of the saints and the bible says there are different kinds of graces wisdom is a grace the anointing is a grace intuition is a grace creativity is a grace and the bible says on account of god's desire to make you fruitful he can coordinate all grace that means that god looks at your life and finds out the dimensions of his grace that must be captured in your life for the result he said you produce to be produced and that in his wisdom he is able to make all grace abound the word abound there means to make it within your reach god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having sufficiency the word sufficiency here is not just abundance of resources alone that means that you are not limited in anything as far as your assignment or your productivity is concerned and then it says that you having sufficiency in all things may abound the goal is to produce good works but the bible says the system is that god will have to assist you so fruitfulness is not something that is just a product of your initiative you have to be assisted by god and the bible says one of the ways that god assists us is that by his intelligence he scans through your life and finds out what dimensions the graces that are not yet there and god is able to make all grace favor is grace he can make that grace abound towards you intelligence is grace divine direction is grace and God is able to make all grace to make all grace to make all grace like instruct them favor go and meet pastor alpha God is able to make he knows that if that dimension of grace is not in your life it will make him look like a liar so he puts pressure on his own integrity and commands that dimension of grace to find a way of colliding with you jesus and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency he says in all things may abound to every good work i believe this for my life all grace so it's no surprise if someone cannot sleep because of me and wakes up in the morning and says i don't know why i was thinking about you i know what is happening in the spirit god is making all grace he's coordinating the tools the possibilities that must be featured in my life all grace if he means him to silence a wicked man somewhere in the village he can make all grace that is grace too judgment is grace because it has the ability to make the word of god come to pass in your life god is able to make all grace so he looks at you at a man of god and knows that there are certain testimonies you need in your ministry for certain people to call your attention so he makes all grace he will direct that grace he knows that for as long as you recycle a particular dimension of testimonies you will not call on the attention of kings so he will supply that grace all grace 
he can delay your destiny helper because you were delayed he will punish another man to make sure you must meet in time all grace that is called mercy all grace you were supposed to run fast but you slowed down then god makes another man to slow down to wait for you because you have to meet all grace believe what i'm telling you now my brothers and my sisters whoever receives this privilege from god is a sign and a wonder you will look at such lives and marvel god is able to make all grace god gave me a revelation of this scripture in my time of retreat and i didn't know what to do with myself again to make all grace all grace i sit down and i discern that you are thirsty and whoever has water within your vicinity is in trouble because one man is thirsty i make sure all water find the way whether it's from a well whether it's from rain whether it's from a factory producing water i know you need water so i will coordinate grace is a force it can make things come to you if god knows you need the ministry of men he will make all grace all grace they will come to you and wonder why they are there you, you will know they didn't bring themselves all grace if god sees that the level you are stepping into there is a dimension of consistent prayer contact that you must make to allow your spirit build capacity in a strange way without your requesting it a kind of fire will land on you it's not something that you will try to do it will so quicken you you will wake up and pray non-stop like a madman he's making all grace because what he's about to give you he vets your capacity and sees that you are you are not yet built to hold it so he makes all grace and you find out that all through february all his dealings with you is around prayer and fasting and you say god what are you doing it is still all grace because you who cannot fast two days without tasting something you are now going three days dry complete dry i don't mean breaking in the night it's not your human making he's making all grace and by the third day he comes to you and said this is why i put the fast there is a new oil there is a new wine i was shedding off the old wine skin so you can carry something that cannot be disproved we give you god the highest praise from the rising of the sun mm. We give you say the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the one more time. We give you God the highest praise. You had you had the testimony of the gentleman here that an angel can stand up and give you a number all grace he found out that every man he instructed to honor you disobeyed and he said no not even men will stop me if they will not praise me i can raise stones 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 let me tell you it's a fearful thing when god becomes desperate over a man it's a fearful thing to say that the jealousy of God becomes directed towards a man clear the way for that man because there is nothing you can do in time that can interrupt what... listen listen I want you to get this I'm showing you the implications of receiving a prophetic word the Holy Ghost is not looking for a man the Holy Ghost is following where the word is so if you receive the word you attract his attention and once he comes that place where the word has been received becomes the center of his activity until the word achieves what it came to do all grace all grace all grace all grace all grace no matter how he would do it he, if it means him overturning all grace must reach you there's something in biology 
called trophic movements remember we were taught something like that there's geotrophism there's phototrophism it's a system by which plants insist until they grow so if you bend a plant in a way and it needs sunlight it will find a way to squeeze itself until it receives that light if you close it how many of you have seen trees break fence by the root because they need to spread they were not designed to be confined and whoever made a mistake and put a fence on it it will keep quiet like it will shift it until you see the fence cracking how forcible are right words they will push every barrier until the word of god prevails so if god has told you man of god this is your season of appearing i tell you forget about whoever likes you or doesn't like you is a joke when his hand rests upon you he will station all your destiny helpers in a meeting where he will so lavishly anoint you when your enemies testify of God upon your life, you have won. You have won. Because the testimony of your enemies is more believable than that of your friends. Their enmity validates the truthfulness of what they are saying. I don't like this pastor, but my God, I saw it by myself. This is the hand of God. Look at the scripture again. And then we'll deal with a few things and God is able God is able if God were not able then I'll be afraid because how will the grace come it's one thing to tell me a possibility but the Bible says God is able let me tell you what it means to be able to be able means to be capable to be able means it is within your jurisdiction ah, within your jurisdiction if I have 10 naira and I see a little search of pure water I am able to buy it the resource to make it happen is there is that true if I have a company for instance and I see a young man who is a graduate and trusting God for a job I am able able means it is within your ability so let's go now it says it is within God's ability to make all grace it is within God's ability to bring the anointing it is within God's ability to open you up to a strange dimension of visions and dreams. It is within God's ability to manipulate the loyalty of men towards you. God is able to make all grace, not grace, all grace, abound towards you. That means that the next time you see strange things happening, you will not act ignorant again. The next time you find out that you wanted to go in the morning and a visitor delayed you and now that you are coming out you meet someone you've been trying to meet you have an interpretation to that coincidence all grace walking by the spirit of wisdom hmm. God has decided to channel his jealousy towards us this year like never before and then declaring that we be fruitful it will be wicked he says it says when i send thee lackest thou anything in other words i cannot send you without equipping you god does not equip you by giving you money he doesn't equip you just by giving no 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 he equips you by giving you something supernatural that will begin to manipulate men to your own wonder why are you helping me and the person says honestly if i had the answer and then you know there is a reason why do you want to buy chairs for my church don't you have a pastor to say I, I i i can't explain why and you know all grace all grace being channeled towards you please sit down so by the spirit of the living god and by the illumination of god's word we know that he is bringing us into a season of extreme productivity He's bringing us to a season of influence. He's bringing us to a season of increase. He's bringing us to a season of unusual results. What does it mean to have extraordinary fruitfulness? It means to establish territorial dominion 
through unusual consistent and ever increasing results to establish territorial dominion through unusual consistent ever increasing results what does it mean to be fruitful to be fruitful means to expand to break borders to venture into virgin horizons dimensions never thought possible give us Colossians chapter 1 please and then verse 9 and 10 Colossians 1 9 and 10 very powerful scripture it says for this cause we also since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding 10 that ye may walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god being fruitful in every good work fruitfulness is a time of a mighty manifestation of supernatural results in every area every area mighty manifestation of supernatural results fruitfulness also entails a time of restoration a time of restoration until the spirit be poured upon us from on high he says 32 and verse 15 isaiah then he says that the desert land be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine for a forest until the spirit be poured upon us from on high it's a time of restoration extraordinary fruitfulness entails a time of great favor great favor one of the evident graces that should be at work in the saints when God declares fruitfulness let's look at the keys very quickly for every door we desire opened in the spirit there are keys I'm going to give us two keys tonight very quickly that will control our experiencing extraordinary fruitfulness number one the first key is embracing the ministry of the word please write it down embracing the ministry of the word my brothers and my sisters we are living in times where you're neglecting the word will be to your own peril it's not only a prerequisite for your spiritual advancement but it will translate to your success in general the bible likens the word to water are we together now and biology teaches us i hope i'm right forgive me if i'm not but i think i am that the human body contains over 70 percent of water that is the condition among other things for a man to be said to be healthy and alive so if a body lives because of the abundance of the water in it and that even our own earth as an ecosystem survives because of the abundance of water two-thirds of the world being covered with water then imagine a life without water that's exactly what happens to a spirit without the word i know a little bit about what the absence of water can do in a human body it can cause shock and can even kill the person so when there is no that water of the word is not at work in you there is a deficiency a system was designed in man to detect thirst and i think they tell us medical people tell us that by the time you really feel thirsty your body has already been frustrated demanding water is that true that you shouldn't have to wait until the body gets that thirsty 
the ministry of the word and you know many times when we say the word of god many believers just oh yeah yeah you mean scriptures no 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 the word of god is not just a vague compendium of letters for us to cram and quote and recite like a charm for victory no no we must understand what the word of god is i told you that the word of god is a compendium of god's methodology the word of god is a compendium of his system of operation so by the time the bible says that the word of god dwells in you richly it means that you come into a full comprehension of god's ways of doing things that you be enlightened illumination by the spirit granted unto you that you will know know not awareness fellowship with the mystery the ministry of the word nobody in the kingdom ever bears fruit ignoring the word he will only bear fruit in season when he is planted by the rivers of water the rivers of the word you will yield your fruit in season and then your leaves will not wither he said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them and then he says your profiting will appear unto all is God blessing us now please write this down there are three dimensions of the word of God that we must embrace that is tied to fruitfulness number one according to Colossians chapter 1 please leave it there and verse 9 the first dimension of the word of God that we need is the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will the knowledge of his will number two the word of God as wisdom number three the word of God manifesting a spiritual understanding so the Bible tells us that I desire that you be filled with these tripartite dimensions one the knowledge of his will that you understand the system of operation of God that you are able to discern his will through it Hebrews chapter 1 says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us by the fathers and through the prophets verse 2 says had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word which he has appointed to be heir of all things that his most valid instrument for discerning his will is his word it's important you cannot lay claims on the truth of God's word when you are in doubt if it is the will of God. That means that you need to search the scripture to find out, is it the will of God to prosper me? Is it the will of God to lift me? Is it the will of God to heal me? Is it the will of God for my ministry to flourish? Is it the will of God to cause me to become a voice over a territory? When you know the mystery of his will, then you can engage your faith and receive it. And then number two wisdom we need the wisdom of God the Bible says every house is built through wisdom and by understanding it is established a house is not built through desire desire only gives you the fortitude to create an atmosphere for the spirit of wisdom to come it says through desire a man having separated himself seek it and intermeddled with all wisdom the desire brings about separation but it will take the word to administer wisdom listen the word of god is the wisest perspective of god concerning any issue the word of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters because there are times that you are in a straight between your intelligence and the word of god there are times you are in a straight between culture and the word. There are times you are in a straight between your instincts and the word. At that time, you will have the confidence to lean on the word of God as touching or as, as providing the wisest perspective. No man ever fails following the word. Listen, every time you are in doubt of the voice of God, let the word of God be his voice. Because even if an angel comes to preach another gospel that defies the integrity of the word, then let him be accursed. The ministry of the word. Many believers refuse the word. We want results. 
but the fortitude to be patient to stay to build to know it takes a lot of sacrifice there is a spiritual labor to receive the word that is the labor that the bible enjoins that we have to enter our rest acts chapter 20 please quickly and verse 32 acts chapter 20 and 32 it says and now brethren i commend you to god and then to the word of his grace the word that is able to cause all graces to come towards you it says which is able to build you up uh-huh and then give you an inheritance notice the operation of the word you are commended to the word and that the word operates first by building you up the word does not just give you an inheritance the word vets your capacity to receive that inheritance and if you fall short of it it first will build you up then deliver to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so you can know them that are sanctified by the inheritance they possess and demonstrate and that the word of god is able to build you are we together now the word is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance i think it's galatians 4 that says for an heir as long as he's a child he says he differed not from a slave though he be lord of all so he is destined to walk in his inheritance but the bible says provided he is a child void of understanding he differed not the results does not show any difference between the child and the slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed so the word of god can wean us away from spiritual childishness and bring us into a point of maturity and then as a reward deliver to us our inheritance everybody say the word of god so you can see a weak person come mike a weak person and standing as weak as he is and he's foolish enough to embrace the word of god are we together now the knowledge of his will the wisdom of god spiritual understanding the bible says these forces begin to walk in him and suddenly it begins to build him up it builds him by transforming his mind recalibrating his understanding giving him god's perspective so he is now put in a position where he is able to rise above culture rise above the sociological context of men his viewpoint becomes the word of god and then the bible says to prove to you that he stayed in the school of the spirit he is given an inheritance among the sanctified his ranking and he's given an opportunity to transit states and you see him and know that i used to know this guy but now what has happened he has been built and given something i think it was day before yesterday or yesterday i usually follow the news on channels they are online platform and i saw the president decorating i think the new inspector general of police and then i said this is it this is my message here for whatever reason you have been built then you are given something and with that comes new responsibilities privileges etc are we together now now what that man could not do whoever he is now he's able to do because he has been given something that's what the word of god does it takes you the way you are and begins to build you and the system of the word is that it builds from inside out this is where the carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit because most people listen carefully most people seek to look at outward results very quickly and sometimes we try to manipulate the word by making results for ourselves in the out no it doesn't work that way there is a walking of the spirit within you and my brothers and my sisters when god perfects his work within you the evidence must show it will show in every area it will show in your ministry and all of that let me tell you something about spiritual realities if you have it you have it if it's not there once you are doubting is it really there it means it's not there or it's still on its way reaching you if it gets there then it will show it's true are we together now the word is able to build you that means one of the ways the devil is going to try to destroy you is to create 
whatever formula he can create to alienate you from contact with the world and you will be surprised that one of the ways the devil can distract you is even to give you a bible you will think just because you are holding a bible he gives you a word he can wrap you up in religion so that you are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth you will continue to flatter yourself that just because your eyes continue to make contact with a a book produced by zondervan or white taker house you will mean that you are growing in the world he says ever learning he saw the scribes and said ye search the scriptures for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me there are all kinds of ways the devil can distract us especially for we preachers because boy ministry can make you so busy and you will be searching the word but you are just looking for a sermon and you can array nice sermons and get all kinds of sermons you are instant as far as ministry is concerned but as a person the richness of the word is not in you and remember our spiritual fortification in this kingdom is the formidability of the word of god that you have meaning that if the word of god is not rich in and around you your life is at a risk when life pushes you it will have to take the word content in you to find expression are we together now when the word is not at work in you you are going to be frustrated and discouraged because my brothers and my sisters like pastor alpha was sharing we are at times where men are not just saying based on the world system there is a casting down um someone sent me a text about a funny way somebody stole a phone and i said he would have just begged they would have given him i mean why did you have to that's 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 what hunger does Hunger can make women eat their children. Talk more of a fool. When Satan wants people to forget about God, he manipulates their belly. He manipulates the economy. He heats up everything to make sure people forget about God. Are we together now? But in the name of Jesus, it will be minus you. Some of you, what God will do, you will even be afraid to testify because of the kind of anger around the people who are not in the mood to hear anything God has done. And so you have to just leave and come and dance in the house of God because you will feel unfair because of the kind of testimony you have. Even you will feel sad for them. Not because you are being sarcastic. You are wondering, Lord, this is... And he says, you believed me and so you committed me. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able persuaded that he is able John chapter 15 and verse 16 I was preparing this and the Lord gave me a powerful revelation he said the word ordains you to be fruitful the word ordains you like you conduct an ordination service and you pour oil on a man and say from today brother abc you have become pastor this or whatever you are are we together now the bible says the word can coordinate a an ordination ceremony an ordination is a system of authorization and that the word like a minister can ordain you into a realm it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you the word speaking and ordained you to go and bring fruit a beautiful sister here stood as tiny as she was i was just smiling at her a dear one who stood here that wonderful lady and she stood with her cabin crew license that's an ordination are we together yes if you try to harass her around an airport even if she's not employed yet she's able to tell you no 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 i'm a license this and that that means i have received the authorization because these gates are still there remember our old gates and so there is a license and it says i have ordained you i didn't just send you i ordained you ordained by the word where is your pass into the realm of increase and you bring the word 
God said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And the gate opens. There you go. And for someone, he comes, where, where is your past? And he says, I'm tired. And the gate said, turn around. Weariness is not a key for open doors. It takes the word. Where is your past for a new level of the anointing? then you say i will make you exceedingly fruitful that nation shall come out of you and kings out of your loins the word ordains it is true the word ordains let me indoctrinate you with this revelation get it ordained to bear fruit Kabarako satire. that means whatever you are involved in looks at you you come with a license ordained to bear fruit I'm a music minister ordained to bear fruit in the name of Jesus. That means there is a life giving factor in your songs that must force them to reach the nations. An ordination happened through the word ordained to bear fruit, not ordained to talk stories, not ordained to explain, ordained to produce results. Men of God, hear this the word of God is able to ordain you that you go and bring fruit not just go and get fruit to go and bring forth like a woman pregnant and then she brings forth something out of her a child so i can send you alone as weak as you are and say look at the multitudes that god is sending you to i may not have naira and cobble to give you but I commend you to the word of his grace and you feel weak in yourself you say look I, I'm unqualified and the word of God says hold on let me ordain you and the same way you know those days when they had, when they ordained Anglican priests many things would happen those days we used to wear cassocks you know you wear the whole regalia from top it must touch the ground clean shoes well polished and all of that and you are so happy and um, they used to call us seminarians even the masquerades didn't flog us are we to yes we had masquerades that sometimes would come up to harass people we used to move in groups the masquerades would run around and dare not come near us because even the masquerade knows a priest from a that means that ordination creates immunity that Satan is running helter skelter he comes to a house and sees you clothed with the word it's an ordination and they tell the demon go now i say you you come and go the word of god building fortification so don't be surprised when a thousand falls by your side and ten thousand by your right side it looks so close you are worried god says have you not heard that it shall not come nigh thy dwelling only will you stand and see watch the reward of the wicked ordained to be fruitful john 15 and verse 16 ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful if this is all you get tonight is worth it that you can walk around knowing that this fruitfulness thing i'm not getting it illegitimately or illegally i am ordained so as a man of god you go for a meeting you expect people to be healed you expect people to be delivered you expect that there be an outpouring of the holy spirit you expect revelations and signs and wonders and the moment you stand there and say praise the lord and the demons are flying out and liberating people is a token of your ordination is proof that you came with the word you didn't send yourself sent by the word ordained to be fruitful if i'm a destiny helper to you and then i come and i was supposed to pass you because of the investment of the word upon you it has been ordained to make sure the graces come to you and that word will compel me to want to come and help you and support you thank you mike are we together now ordained to be fruitful ordained to be fruitful king of kings lord of lords let your kingdom reign in my life Adonai Adon, the Lord Adonai Let your kingdom come So I pray let your kingdom come 
number two the second key is the ministry of the holy spirit not just the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the holy spirit the second key to being fruitful is engaging the ministry of the holy spirit zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 popular but very powerful zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto joshua selman saying hallelujah not by might otherwise some of us will not be strong enough nor by power but by not the spirit my spirit saith the lord the spirit of the lord the spirit of the lord that this fruitfulness will not be by might that this ministry exploits will not be by might are we together now by human empowerment not by power he says but by my spirit saith the lord but by my spirit this miracle will not happen by might nor by power the testimonies that many of let, let me tell you this let me tell you this truly speaking and i submit to you if you find your feet here then you must testify it's true it's a grace there's nothing to be angry about it's a grace we read there that god is able are we together now look at the gentleman that an angel called him gave him this if he didn't have a job you would think he's lying and he called the name of the place you can go and verify that the word comes and just like somebody wanting to steal from you the word continues to trail you until it surprises you you know how a thief follows you 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 think you are walking alone but a thief is following you to steal your phone this one is following you to make sure you are blessed did you not read in your bible that there are two spirits called goodness and mercy and that they can follow men they can follow you Do you know honestly i i pray that you believe what i'm saying and my brothers and my sisters you will sit back and wonder at life and you will become an evangelist by force begging people to stop wasting their time and say look come come there is a fountain of living water the way you are going about it is going to end you in frustration come i have found when you encounter the world when you encounter the spirit you must be a testifier the woman said come see a man i know you are not interested but i'm begging you that's the reaction to a man who becomes marvelously helped by God. You become too grateful. You, the, the compassion burns in you. And you can wake your family members and say, Look, let's be tired of this state in this house. There is a way out. The ministry of the Spirit. Isaiah 48 and verse 16. It will always be the word and the spirit come near unto me look up please hear this I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there I am read with me the remaining part one to go and now the Lord God uh -huh, and his spirit had sent me so how were you sent the word and the spirit the lord god and his spirit had sent me the lord god his integrity and the spirit had sent me the lord god and his spirit had sent me to preach the lord god and his spirit has sent me to go and get a job the lord god and his spirit there are testimonies that if you don't believe the word you will think people are lying you will even be angry before the testimony finishes and say is it really true the lord god and his spirit not a politician his spirit the last time the lord and his spirit came together 
that collision brought the recreation of the earth genesis chapter one don't turn there just just hang on here the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth he says now the earth was dark and void and formless and then the spirit of god hovered around the face of the waters verse 3 and elohim said light be and the breathing of the spirit and the word ensured that god said it and he saw it and he didn't just see it you can see it and see what is bad he saw it and he said it is good the lord god and his spirit i have carried this consciousness for many years and i pray i don't know the formula god will use to make this real for you but i truly pray that it happens to you especially for those of us who are in ministry the lord god and his spirit the lord god and his spirit the lord god and his spirit when god goes with you worship team helped us and sang the other time that when he holds your hands everything becomes possible i know we sang it as a song but you must find a way of believing it it is true the lord god and his spirit with god all things with god your music ministry possible with god even the enmity of all people that came from your background and know you and know your family and have kept prophecies in advance because they are so sure you will not rise you will be just like your father and your mother and the lord god and his spirit changing the writings blotting out handwritings rewriting truths the lord and his spirit but for his spirit and his word you would fail but the lord and his spirit you were supposed to fail but his rod and his staff comfort you they lift you up the lord god and his spirit has sent me walk in that consciousness I am not sent alone number one is that i am sent two i am not sent alone the arsenals that were sent with me is the word of god and his spirit the holy spirit is powerful and wonderful the lord god and his spirit when the spirit of god came upon a young lady called mary the Bible declares that supernaturally, she said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? And it says that the power of the highest, ah, the power of the highest, a woman who was not qualified to be fruitful, but when the power of the highest came upon her, she left the rest to that power. Hers was to believe and say, be it unto me. The dynamics of how that one happened, leave it to the intelligence of the spirit. The same way the power of God will overshadow you and you start something that is laughable and by the third month everybody sits in wonder and says what has God done the Lord God and his spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost leave the power part anointed jesus of nazareth with a person the holy ghost you can't do ministry without the holy spirit no. you can't understand the bible without the holy spirit i can tell you this when it comes to understanding scripture there is very little of your creativity and education quite honestly that plays a role you will need the illumination of the spirit are we together Elihu said there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty there is a spirit in man there is a spirit in man without that spirit there is no inspiration there is a spirit in man and the inspiration the breath of the Almighty make it men of understanding you can't just understand no understanding is the holy spirit living out his intelligence through your mind so you sustain capacity that is not fair for humans to have the same way a spirit possesses a man and begins to live out its characteristics through the faculty of that man god is able to come upon you as the spirit of understanding and open up your fortitude to comprehend in an unusual degree and an unusual dimension bible study only aids it but it does not create it this one 
comes by the spirit is God speaking to us tonight please give us John 16 and verse 12 and 13 and then we'll quickly go to the instructions that the Lord will have us I have yet many things to say to you but ye cannot bear them now Jesus is speaking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit now how be it when he the spirit of truth that means I can trust every information that comes from him regardless of what my mind says the spirit of truth is come he will what guide you he will what does it mean to guide to coordinate you to make sure you are within the jurisdiction of truth he is able to coordinate you define boundaries so that you always stand in a position of truth that becomes an advantage the bible says he shall guide you into all truth all truth there is a body of knowledge remember the bible says that we are a chosen nation a royal priesthood a peculiar people are we together now it says we have been called forth to show the praises of him that has called us from darkness into his marvelous light not just light marvelous light an exact body of truth that qualifies you to possess a certain level of dominion within a dispensation is called marvelous light and the Bible says the Holy Spirit can guide you can guide you you can read a book on finances you can read a book on leadership you can read a book on all of these things wonderful but when the Holy Spirit comes he will not just educate you he will guide you guide you guide you we are being guided by the Spirit that is the help of God given to us guided the prophetic word came by the guidance of the spirit you can't sit down and just invent a word mm, i think you are saying this no he comes in the fifth month of the sixth year of this and that the word of the lord came like a messenger sent from the throne to you and when it comes you receive it the evidence shows the lord and his spirit has sent me the bible says he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he shall show you things to come he will cause you to be ahead not by predicting by taking you there he will show you the holy spirit does not predict because he is god he will show you this is the next line this is the system of advantage for the next years that come in ministry in life finances etc do you believe all i've been sharing blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her not unto them unto her there shall be a performance the performance is for those who believe 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 pistis conviction and the action that you take based on that conviction The ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word the ministry of the word without the spirit will make you religious the ministry of the spirit without the word will make you superstitious it will take the word and the spirit that's why those who pray and crave for the prophetic without a foundation of the word will many times double into spiritism and witchcraft that's not backsliding they are not necessarily fake but the word of god does not define the coordinates of balance for them and so you find out that they can double into what they themselves don't understand just because it's supernatural they will give the credit to the holy spirit whereas there's you, is the spirit of a man can be exposed to the influences of multiple spirits so it's possible for the Holy Spirit to coexist in operation with other spirits. Not necessarily in your spirit man. They can find expression around your faculties and you produce varying outcomes. Hmm. So it's important for us to know 
the word of god cultivates in you the character the understanding of god's modus operandi so that even in the administration of the spirit you are defined by the boundaries that brings balance and edification to the saints it is dangerous that's why you have a lot of people continue to pray pray until they take them in the psychiatric ward the doctors will tell you have you seen many people get to the hospital just praying praying i'm not saying they are bad people but sometimes people have gone to the mountain to pray and return back mad you you can't credit that kind of thing to god they may be well-meaning don't be offended if your loved one has been like that i'm saying that their spirits were so open that space was supposed to be filled with the word but see every time satan sees vacuum he doesn't leave it alone he's obsessed with space if he finds space anywhere space through ignorance space through zeal without knowledge he's a welcome guest invited or not so when you begin to build capacity it's like borrowing vessels and leaving it empty he will quickly come are we together now and then those who continue to study scripture they pride themselves because the knowledge of the word has an intellectual dimension and the intellectual dimension itself is rewardable are we together now as a theologian as an intelligent person when you speak to people who are educated your ability to conjure thoughts that make sense it makes sense to civilization it makes sense to to um the 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 the, the context of men so you will think that just because you coordinated yourself well intellectually that means you have delivered according to the spirit no that's why jesus looked at the scribes and the pharisees and says he are not knowing the scripture they thought it to be an insult because they believed they were better scripturally educated than jesus himself i mean these guys had they had the proofs of the entire torah in their minds they would recite it verbatim and jesus said you are still in error they felt offended don't insult us we are the doctors of the law hopefully sometime this year i will teach you how the sanhedrin council came the sanhedrin council started with moses it was a system of eldership that was created for him to pour his spirit to help him coordinate spiritual activities and all of that error religion the spirit was out of it up until we get to the Roman government, we still have a Sanhedrin council, but the spirit left. Remember, there were 70 elders that were called. Come on now, are you not Bible students? That's where it started from. Now, in the New Testament, the one who instructed it, they have been so organized, they don't even know him again. Who are you? We have been in this ritual for decades. We inherited it from our fathers. And Jesus said, no wonder, no wonder. Just because a thing is very long does not mean God is there. Hallelujah. This year you must embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not for those who want power. You know, that's the description that we have in church. You want power, they say, go and watch Benny Hinn. Go and watch this go and watch that so that you get power no the holy spirit was given us an advantage the advantage of the believer hallelujah right where you are seated i want you to pray in one minute lord i open myself to your word i'm tired of shadow boxing i truly open up myself to your word the ministry of your word and the ministry of the spirit i open up myself to the ministry of your word let your word culture me let your word train me let your word mentor me please pray i commend you to the word i commend you to the word i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to give you is able to give you i commend you 
to the word of his grace it is able to build you up fruitfulness I have ordained you to go and bring forth fruit hallelujah praise the lord now very quickly i want you to listen to some instructions seven of them bishop oyedeko said we walk by common sense we run by principles but we fly by instructions the ones who produce pilots and work in the aviation industry they are called instructors are we together now the humility to constrain yourself to god's instructions every time a prophet came bringing the word of the lord to a person a family he came with instructions and all those who were humble enough to hearken to the instructions saw all kinds of signs and wonders happen to them instructions can you pray in one minute and say lord give me the heart give me the heart to not argue with your instructions my son he says attend unto my words incline your ears to my sayings he says do not let them depart from your heart they are life to those who find them Please pray. You are beautiful in all your ways. Lift your voice and pray. You are beautiful in all your ways. I delight in your instructions. I delight in your instructions. You are beautiful in all your ways. Hallelujah. Please write this down. Listen, I want you to write it in a way that you will always be able to see don't just squeeze it and congest it somewhere if you need to use a fresh page for it write it down not as a ritual but as a guide god is determined to help us experience fruitfulness and we're starting off by receiving these words from him are we together now the lord calls moses to go up the mountain are we together now and while he's up on the mountain many things began to happen and a finger came from heaven is that true and the finger began to write on the rock carved the rock and wrote certain instructions and he said carry that instruction go and give the people that this is what will guide them to be a distinct people yes that is the old covenant the law but the principle is still the same one of the things we receive up the mountain with god is that we allow his finger to write written by god's own hand that these are the precepts remember the grace to walk in them is already supplied so he gives you walk by this there is no blessing in the spirit that does not have conditions attached to them deuteronomy chapter 28 and when you read verse 1 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day then he says that you shall be set up on high above every nation all other nations and these blessings will come upon you to overtake you then it begins to list them it shall come to pass if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe pay attention number one 
the first divine instruction for us for this year be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress instruction number one be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress be intentional the key word there is intentional don't just leave it up to God to say Lord if you want me to grow you will do it you have to be intentional the same way you are intentional about cooking you take the rigor of going to the market and nothing will stop you not even your hunger you get to the market and patiently search out everywhere till you find the ingredients you go back home time is already gone the meal may take an hour or two but you are intentional about making sure that there is a meal in the pot that's how you must approach your spiritual life we are living listen to me in times where the moment you are careless with your spiritual life you will pay for it you have to be intentional write it down let me just buttress quickly on it place priority on your time with the word place priority on your time in prayers place priority on your time in corporate fellowship I say it again place priority still buttressing on point one on your time with the word your time in prayers and your time in corporate fellowship these are spiritual bailout systems these are spiritual strategies to keep us up and doing regardless of the storms and the vicissitudes of life the lord told me this be intentional many of us have never truly honestly grown in the spirit there are people who truthfully speaking under god never read their bibles doesn't mean they don't open it they open it only on koinonia just look at it and you are busy you just close it and say i will read it later on it's an attack every time you are neglecting the word remember the example i gave about a body the water is reducing from 70 percent to 30 to 20 until you begin to choke spiritually the word content it's important be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress place priority invest time with the word let me advise many of us here who are working class you have businesses or you have jobs please sit down with God and design a strategy for your spiritual growth you will never have time that you didn't create did you hear what I said you will never have time thank you that you did not create you will have to create and make time anything you don't create time for there is no time for it you eat because you create time for eating you go on a job because you created time for it if you don't create time for God in your life there will not be time for God God is not about to add one minute to 24 hours we are all given that and that's all we have per day you have to create time for some of us it may mean trusting God for grace to flog out the spirit of slumber from your life if your day is obviously occupied then you have to train your spirit man to be awake and invest in the world all of us may not have equal time every day but please trust God for grace to create time create time create time create time oh how I love your Lord they are my meditations all day long let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart embrace the word there was a very popular story of Smith Wigglesworth it was said if you went to his house you would almost be bored because all you will be doing is reading scriptures they will open the Bible you will share then you close it just laugh over and then you say let's do it again and then you open the Bible even in his photo you see him with a small Bible holding it no wonder he was from a cobbler became one of the apostles of faith the Word of God built him up gave him an inheritance 
if you have salary minus the word of god you are in trouble if you have more degrees minus the word of god you are in trouble if you have more influence minus the word of god you are in trouble twice for even contending for influence minus the word anything minus the word is not just zero is trouble be intentional about your spiritual growth and progress for some of us you have not yet agreed on a place for prayer with god i mean personal prayer not just tuesday prayer with prayer band and prayer here in koinonia you need to go the extra mile some of us have roommates and friends and of course you don't disturb and distract people if you trust god and cry the holy spirit you know this the way believers seek god now is very disturbing people went out of their ways to found there used to be in the campus those days there's a place many of you don't know it was called lawn tennis court people would come some under the tree some near a chair they just pile a chair and you are passing sometimes you are passing you want to quickly go and ease yourself you hear somebody just praying there you know there was no near here this is me and god but now this obsession for convenience please don't get me wrong i'm not saying god wants us to be comfortable but let me tell you the truth if it is god you want to do business with trust god for grace to conquer an excessive appetite for convenience people used to pray in the rain 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 falling they would lie down and say let it finish on me and god says you do this to express your passion not because that's the activity that gets god to you but it's a token of your hunger and desperation please find a place to pray find a place to pray there's too much distraction in our world and don't get me wrong again i know that i'm talking to a larger body of people don't get me wrong i don't mean to be sarcastic manage social media are we together manage this some of us even if there is nothing you have to text you have to check something ah let me check who is there now those things can eat up time time will continue to pass trust god for grace to stay with the word ah, is there any problem while you are praying like this no this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness the rod of aaron did not just board it was kept somewhere location mattered not anywhere there was a place it was kept Samuel was lying down close to the ark when he had the voice of God anywhere is not where God meets with people God is everywhere but no sensible man meets with anybody just anywhere you don't hold meeting at a junction where a mechanic is fixing a car and you say come for a board meeting no atmosphere matters with God it's true if there is no place in your house convert your toilet to an atmosphere it's not insulting at least nobody will disturb you when you are there and you cry your heart oh god open my eyes there is one thing i can see that will change my life what is it it's not just to pray and then you just pray and then say amen and you are going god has not responded were you alone you didn't believe he was there they that wait doesn't mean they that fast it means they that lie down there and say lord i'm not going anywhere god honors the faith of waiters i have benefited from waiting it's not every time you are talking and praying download worship tunes like this come and meet the worship team to set something for you like this and all you are doing is just lying down and soaking in that presence and then his word will come he will send one word to you and it will light upon your family and your generation he sent a word to jacob listen we win by the strategies we receive from the spirit there is something i must see to win joshua knew this and he refused to move until the circumcision was done and here comes the captain of the host of god he came to deliver the strategy this is what you are going to do had the angel not come joshua would have been surprised at what jericho would do for him you know the story makes it cheap cheap victories because of the strategy god gave not because the matter is not serious 
when god comes he has the ability to deflate every mountain like a balloon and you say where is the mountain before zerubbabel please learn to stay learn to stay learn to stay gentlemen you want to be established it's not all about just reading reading i must make it i must huddle you need to lock yourself and say lord one thing is needful open my eyes what is it it's painful to run around and merry-go-round and find out you still did not get it his presence has value stay you're a man of god stay don't just go around sending text messages i know you may be well-meaning please invite me you you've seen me preach the other day with promise the other day i preached with pastor Femi. i think you by now you know i'm a man of god no no stay and let there be a walking of the spirit it may be for days it may be for months but let me tell you when you truly stay with god and he comes to you you will be surprised what your life will become number two let's hurry up be intentional second instruction about building capacity underlying capacity through proper exposure and useful word-based information i will take it again be intentional about building capacity through proper exposure you can underline the word proper exposure is a double-edged sword proper exposure and useful word-based information there are all kinds of information on the internet that propose success propose a good life there is a maze of ideas swimming all around the internet attempting to profess solution to the various predicaments of men but heaven and earth will pass away the bible says but only his word abides forever whatever information you grant access to your life like a drug it must be vetted on the platform of the word if it does not pass that test my brother and my sister don't waste your time because you will still go through the rigor of taking it out again let it never even get there in the first place capacity second kings chapter 4 and 1 to 6 don't turn there just write it down the challenge of the woman was an issue of capacity not oil the oil had potentials but the vessel was small so the oil reduced to assume the shape of the vessel and the prophet identified it he said i know what is wrong it's not necessarily a need for more oil he says go and borrow vessel he said borrow not a few and she shot herself and the oil continued to pour and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped god blesses us according to his perception of our capacities matthew 25 he gave unto one five talents two talents one not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and in the end i have a teaching on this I will tell you that all the five people were tested because the man with five had the challenge of pride and overconfidence to overcome. The fact that he had the highest, his challenge at his level would be pride and overconfidence. The man at two had the challenge of jealousy and ingratitude to overcome. Knowing there was someone higher than him, he needed to be tested there. The guy with one, it is clear that it's even messy that brought that one. Because later on you see that his anger, and none of the two spoke about the other person, but the last one spoke about the rest in anger. God tested them and he was right. The end of the story tells us. There are people who no amount of praying and fasting will ever increase their talents to three or four god sees that your most profitable spiritual and destiny position is two based on your capacity so it's not just the issue of god lift me capacity is god speaking to us god wants to enlarge our capacity and many times our minds are small the bible says now unto him ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 
who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think ask or think that means your thinking and your asking holds the same value in the spirit you can ask something that your mind tells god don't mad, don't bother don't answer again god answers both your prayer and your thinking your mindset also sends prayer requests to the spirit i can be well-meaning but koinonia may never be able to rise and surpass that mindset hear what the bible says that god is able to do all these things but is limited by the power working in us like tap from water from the dam limited by the channel given to it it can come out as a drop in a bucket whereas it has potentials to fill that bucket in one minute the mighty things that god is able to do is limited by the power that works in us please prophesy to someone seated to you say expand capacity pastors we need to expand capacity men of god businessmen expand your mind there is too much smallness there is too much smallness this is the challenge of africa we are superstitious about everything we are small small businesses small ministry small lives everything small we spiritualize our mediocrity and put together factors that continue to endorse it it says kings shall come out of you nations out of you refuse to be small it's not a blessing herein is our father glorified that you bear much fruit you need to expand capacity not to acquire things oh i must buy a new this a new that mm -mm. expand your mind and your mind will bring everything that will fill up that space are we together number three third instruction be determined to live by faith be determined the third instruction from God to us if we truly are going to walk in the experience of extraordinary fruitfulness be determined my brothers and my sisters to live by faith for the sake of reference write this down you don't have to project it Romans chapter 1 17 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 Romans 1 17 Galatians 3 11 Hebrews 10 38 all these scriptures say the just shall live by faith four of them in all in the Bible one in the Old Testament and one of the rendition says the just shall live by his faith in any case the just lives by faith there is an obsession for results and evidence even before we start the vision speaks in the end you must believe God enough are you getting what I'm saying now the Bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you have to trust God you have to believe God death and life and let me tell you this it is true that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so if the word of God is not rich in your heart, your mouth will continue to speak poisonous things against your destiny. There are many of us who our communications continue to minister woes to our lives. We always speak of weakness. We all speak of this. And it's not the issue of confession, Jare. And let me say this, man, man is suffering. Man, don't do that. Don't do that. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18 and verse 21. It says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof death is like a tree life is like a tree your mouth is like the rope you use to fetch them you can eat death you can eat life death and life are in the power of the tongue make up your mind no matter what it is there's no food to eat in the name of jesus it is well i know god is faithful i know god is faithful lord i thank you i know you are making all things new ah your mother is sick are you aware she's been sick since last week in the name of jesus the word of god is working in my family let me tell you carnal people will insult you and say all these church people and this your god gave us brain be careful people's brains have sent them to their graves it's been sending people for a long time
let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the blessed of the Lord say so huh. and so you speak the righteousness that is by faith speak it and you declare you lock yourself and you are declaring in one room that there are holes here and there rain falling everywhere in the name of Jesus is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness I receive divine ideas Lord I thank you all grace working for me and someone just calls you and say I'm about to leave Zaria uh, is it okay if you stay in my house he says I, I, I didn't get you and God says remember all grace pick the key it's yours and you tell somebody say are, are you sure that that's all that happened all grace all grace all grace believe God oh I may not have money in my pocket but in the name of Jesus I'm receiving remember I'm teaching the true riches God is putting something in my life that will draw resources Gentiles ministry looks like it's rising and falling and you stand and speak in the name of Jesus Christ Christ is being exalted he draws all men by himself I receive the strategies I receive wisdom I have access to his will to wisdom to spiritual understanding I am fruitful the church is fruitful let's minimize the time we spend programming woes to our destiny convert it to times where you speak and create realities are we together beware of naysayers our society is full of naysayers they will always laugh you over you finish koinonia and go back home and they laugh say kai apostle can preach oh ah, ah. see him quoting scripture anyhow i wish it was easy you see those kinds of people may be well-meaning but they will innocently destroy you that's why abraham had to keep some members of his household down because he was about to climb the mountain to do something that was unusual and sometimes people can be too innocent to allow you obey god they can be too innocent to allow the word prevail compassion can be used by satan to stop you he can manipulate the compassion of men around you you want to fast and they say ah bah you are overdoing it even me i'm touched by your hunger and you say really and then you stop whereas the last fast was when god would have come live by faith number four this is a serious one now the fourth word of the lord to us all strive by the spirit i don't know if strife is a good word if it's not find a word that is most appropriate for you strive by the spirit to be exceptional in character and lifestyle write it down please the fourth instruction to us from god if we are going to experience extraordinary fruitfulness strive by the spirit that's why i wrote by the spirit to be exceptional on the line exceptional in character and lifestyle I wrote some things here defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character defeat behavioral limitations defeat the grip of past failures all of these things are like claws that hold on to you and will never allow you strive to the place of destiny as ordained by God. Defeat the limiting grip of culture and background on your character. Strive by the Spirit to be exceptional in character and in lifestyle. That's number four make up your mind that this year and then as always that in the name of jesus by the spirit you will be flawless in character in lifestyle in communication that your words will minister life that you will be you will be flawless your life will be at a true living epistle say amen, amen. there are two bibles you always carry the first is the one in your house the second is you you will always carry two Bibles 
you carry this and carry yourself too your life must depict a character that is worthy of emulation we don't like this but this is an instruction from god i see the way many of you are looking at me strive by the spirit my brothers and my sisters be exceptional in character we live in a society where character doesn't seem to hold so much value again but the bible says you are the light of the world you are a city set on a hill neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel that in the name of jesus your character will preach to someone to be saved are we together now if the only way to evangelize is to verbalize it then something is wrong the flawlessness of your character can make somebody say let me follow your god and if you believe that with me say amen, amen. let me just interject here be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal be careful what society calls normal you must have flawless character you know in all fairness i look at some of our younger ones right now and i am surprised at the level of lawlessness disrespect dishonor and there is a programming by babylon are we together now yes i was talking to my my boys this this evening and i was teaching them i said look guys if you continue to grow like this you will be great people one day god will trust you with your own ministries and all of that you may look weak but keep striving and i was challenging them because uh, permit me to use the word their generation of young men are very proud and arrogant if they can kick you and match your feet they say i match you somebody fell in my meeting that qualifies you to be a fellow man of god there is a lot of pride listen let me tell you the moment acknowledging grace becomes a problem for you is a sign that your life is under attack lot of pride lot of pride many of us don't respect elders again i was teaching i think i was having a meeting with the worship team or so and then i told them something and i want to challenge you to have it is the power of creeds creed c-r-e-e-d a creed is a representation of your conviction in a format that is easy to become a stronghold in your mind we were trained as children with creeds the national pledge is a creed many christian schools had creeds some of you remember now a creed is not a tradition if done well it is a system of internalizing a conviction i was trained in the anglican seminary and we had what we call the apostles creed these are creeds that is like a statement of your conviction these things are not there again till today great corporations in the world have creeds when they have their board meetings they, they chant it sometimes it's almost like it's magical this is what we stand for this is this is that to deliver quality products in an efficient way in you know the most available time you see mature people millionaires with their ties becoming like children creeds are powerful you must have a creed that defines your life who are you you must have a creed that defines your family you must have a creed that defines your business you must have a creed that defines your ministry it doesn't have to be for public consumption who are you what is the worship team who are you what do you stand for what do you deliver to koinonia creeds are powerful we have lost this ancient mystery and many people do not know what they live for and stand for again you call a pastor and say what do you do you say i'm preaching the gospel say, what does that mean say don't, don't just i I'm, I'm preaching the gospel no Great. let's hurry up that's number five right make up your mind to be responsible write it down 
i pray in the name of jesus that the grace that follows this word will fall on as many who need to get this this year make up your mind that this year i will be responsible the word responsible comes from the word responsive respond are we together now don't be inactive don't act like the situation does not demand your attention our society is is brewing a group of very very sadly irresponsible people on all fronts to be responsible means to have a sense of obligation to have a sense of obligation towards life towards your family towards your destiny a sense of obligation to be responsible means to be duty bound you have to be duty bound don't allow the things that are your responsibilities and act as if it does not matter no you're a family man this is the year to be responsible over your family spiritually financially intellectually to coordinate the activities within the family to reflect christ you are a businessman you are a, you are a ministry you are a career person be responsible and this goes as as an added encouragement to our brothers let's trust god for grace to be responsible responsive responsive someone will have to get up and be interested in making things happen don't say they will do it no be the day that will do it i know god will send somebody to help me god has been helping us like that the rent will expire by october but i know whatever it is at least between now and april i know that rent will come Abba, is it not god that sits in heaven and you sit down and stroll yourself until the time reaches and then you turn around and find out that you are bankrupt and it weighs you down be responsible be responsible be responsible over your life be responsible don't just be roaming around town anytime in the morning in the afternoon you run around you're a man of god you are just kicking stones on the street and holding sugar cane in your hand and just smiling you are not acting responsible if you don't have anything to do outside go back to your house and sit down build your mind are we together you don't leave your house and come back by 1 a.m in the morning with no explanation no apology to anybody open the door for me who are you I'm, I'm back home my friend are you stupid this is whose house no let's be responsible say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. I, receive grace I receive grace to be responsible wash your clothes clean your wardrobe before koinonia don't start looking for what to wear five minutes to koinonia and you find out all the clothes are dirty who did you leave it for to wash you are a young man don't act as if you are already rich you can outsource people to help you but you have not made the investment and 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 the impact that can allow people to come and wash for you so you bend down and wash if your clothes are dirty by 1 a.m get up and wash i wash everything you see a young man you are a young man and there are piles of clothes you are a young lady there are piles of plates you are not responsible did you hear what i said you are not responsible if you do that you have to settle down and be serious if you set a task discipline yourself to do it punish yourself in righteousness when you carelessly miss out on your tasks don't sit down just forgive yourself anyhow you were supposed to read a book i said it doesn't matter no you will not go far this is the price for the crown that you so desire and so admire God is not a magician he doesn't make charms there is a pathway number six quickly two more and we're done this is a very serious one and I want you to listen to it when God brought this I prayed this even for my own self even before writing it resist the pressure of pride competition and vain glory very serious one resist the pressure this is the 
sixth instruction resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory proverbs chapter 16 please and verse 18 let me tell you something in my little life i i am yet to know the one thing that destroys faster than pride please we must trust god you know why i'm saying this because we are going to see results that will dumbfound us this year and chances are that when those results come our hearts can be haughty and can be lifted proverbs 16 18 pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall when satan wants to throw you he sends pride he sends a haughty spirit you must resist it society can massage you into pride do you know what pride is coming to a position where you fail to see like vashti that you are all you are because of god vashti never apologized to the king even when she embarrassed him the bible has no record of vashti coming to say king i'm sorry no there was no record even when vashti was banished you see a relationship between Vashti and Mordecai and Haman. It was very clear that the king was weak because he didn't want to banish her. And pride goes before a fall. Let me tell you this. I have seen in my little life people rise to the sky and crash down in dishonor. With all due respect, there are men of God around the world that at one point or the other, God helped them marvelously. And for some reason, their hearts became haughty. And now it's almost as if you make reference to their past. Reject pride. It's something I have asked God to give me grace to, to fight. Because it's very easy to be proud. You know, people come here and you see them acknowledging Apostle Joshua Selman, this and that. Thank God for those things. But let me tell you, pride can kill. Pride is like an arm robber. It can be dangerous it can come into your house like a, an armed bandit and strip you of everything that represents honor in your life are we together let's look at one scripture and we're done proverbs 29 and verse 23 resist the pressure of pride competition and vainglory a man's pride shall do what bring him down but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit what will uphold the, the humble honor there is a relationship between humility and honor god gives you increase and gives you a platform and you say lord i thank you but may it never enter my heart and while men are clapping god says no problem receive the uploads but let them know don't just say lord me and you we know <clears throat> let them know that you are the doer and god says you do this for me step into a new level a new level of increase this humility check is something that i want you to do for the rest of your life not just for this year two points under this embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system embrace true humility as a lifestyle and a value system one of the ways that the lord helps me to stay humble is by always giving me visions of the past if for any reason you forget where god brought you from then you are already on your way to destruction the do you know esther almost made the same mistake of vashti that's to tell you that it the the seat itself had tendencies it was not about vashti it was about the inability it, mordecai was the bailout for esther otherwise she would have followed the route of vashti it was only a matter of time and mordecai said remember remember madam remember that's how one day god will see you when people are clapping for you you know when people clap for me and send me text messages i receive hundreds of text messages 
every day and over 80 to 85 percent of them are people from different nations of the world your message has blessed me apostle of the nations apostle of this elijah of our time moses of our time and i know that they are just innocently trying to say you are a great man and we appreciate you and i look at those things and i look at myself in the mirror i said mr man the day you become proud, the day you let this enter your head and forget you were once a young boy confused and scattered that God took by his grace and mercy. The day you allow the bounties of the palace to make you forget that once upon a time you begged for food, that day you disqualify yourself from the flow of grace. God truly opposes the proud. I have seen this wreck the lives of pastors. I've seen this wreck the lives of business people. I've seen this wreck the life of people generally. There used to be this song. Um, I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. How can I forget? I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, I will not forget, Lord, your benefit. Let it not be that when you have built houses and you have done this and that, you will say, my power and the might of my hand has given me these riches. He said, but thou shalt remember. It means you can forget. Influence can make you remember God, but forget his faithfulness money can make you remember god but forget his faithfulness ah god may i never get there oh i'm asking you in the presence of your people let it not happen to me if it means closing doors close it i rather remain at the level that will keep me useful than to get to a level where you become ichabod oh you once were anointed you once were great a haughty spirit it's like pouring oil on steps the terrible thing with pride is that your fall is seen by all pride is so deadly it supervises your fall and you must touch the ground please pray in one minute and curse the spirit of pride some of them this pride has destroyed some of our family members it has destroyed many people Pride has a track record of destruction. Clot yourselves with humility. Koinonia, this is God's word for us. We're a ministry that God has helped. But be careful. He has made the list among us like David. But be careful lest you begin to scorn at other ministries let you begin to scorn at other men of god scorn at other people's achievements no that's not the spirit of the christ humility oh god i've done my life i am truly nothing without you never be ashamed to let the world know you are nothing without him i will never forget hallelujah powerful secret every time you are praying with god cry that prayer lord bless me oh sam you are an exceptional worshiper in fact let me tell you how people act in fact all these musicians in nigeria they are not up to one tenth of you now at first you will resist it consistency is what creates conviction not truth anything consistently repeated to you becomes a conviction including flattery joshua selman sam ah you are this and that and that and that and first sam says now have a glory be to god and later you say it's true it's true alexander the way you are elijah no no glory be to god but it's true taylor make me elijah's regalia let me shut down rain and this and god said no the way i love you but i'm consistent to my values 
and not even my love for you will stop it not every destruction is caused by satan god himself can bring men down trust god for grace this year koinonia let this be a trait in us that people don't have to say you attend koinonia just by you chanting tongues that they look at your life and say this person is no this humility we can trace you to this ministry when god calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when god calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment god calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture it's not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart brothers and sisters i submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of christ proud men of god proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility your humility is your past and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes I want to be an anointed man I want to carry the anointing I want to carry revelation I want fame I want power no I'm showing you the system of God God's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance pride and arrogance pride and arrogance i know i think i know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level but i know oh i'm educated enough i know look i'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this i know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life i know my father is a pastor or was a pastor i know i was a bible study coordinator when i was on campus i know i married a pastor my husband is a pastor i know this and that you see all sorts of arrogant people many of us young people are arrogant i know i know what to do i know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents i know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this i know mentality 
there's nothing I know that drives the spirit of God like a, a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart I show you the secret of great men they are, they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before God where you lose the ability to argue with God God I, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. Abraham I know you have servants Abraham I know you have a wife Abraham I know you are a local champion but I'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again Genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye be out of your accolades I am a this I've held 10 crusades I am a man of God I am so 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 and so and so no get thee out of your country get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your father's house onto a land that I will show you are we together you want to be fruitful the first key is that disposition of humility everybody say grant me grace to be meek to be humble to be broken hallelujah I will never argue with God's opinion I'm too young I'm too small I'm too naive to argue with God's opinion he's the fountain of wisdom some of us have been trading this childlikeness this this reckless abandon for years and look what he's done look what he's done but there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom and we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever number two Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still the second key listen the second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence ah. I will go I will go anywhere you lead me yeah. I will go Lord I will he does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey the name of the mission is follow me the God I serve will never give you detailed instructions when you meet with God he doesn't start telling you one day he shows you the end and leaves you there he will never tell you what the process will be the mission is follow me why will I leave something I am sure of into something I am unsure of I'm sure of my country I'm sure of my kindred I'm sure of my father's house are we together you are sure of your certificate you are sure of the support of your parents you are sure that if you fail and there is no job your elder sister can be giving you 20,000 then he tells you come out to where a land that I will show you do you know what it means to ask an adult, Oga, where are you going? He says, I'm following God. <laughs> he says, I know, I understand where to. And he says, honestly, let me be sincere with you. The only thing I know is the end of this journey. I know that I will become a fruitful man. I know that my name will be great. 
I will be exceedingly fruitful. That's all I know. The, the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me, but I trust him. But I trust him. Many of you see great people and think God gave them the details. It's faith that opened up the details. Oh. People started ministry. People, God sent people to lands. First night they slept under the bridge. What are you doing in Lagos, sir? God sent me. You are a graduate. Come along with your certificate. He asked me to leave it at home. What are you now doing under the bridge? This is the only place I know in Lagos. Yet God said you will raise a people. Listen. A man who does not trust God will never experience fruitfulness. This our carnal, sensual generation that wants, oh God, you must show me how one plus one becomes two. The mission is follow me. If you trust him enough, follow me. I will go. I will go. Anywhere you lead me. Hey, I will go. Listen. Um, you know me. I'm a fan of responsibility. I like responsible people. But let me tell you something nobody's destiny appears from the beginning the vision speaks in the end it is follow me i asked said jimmy something one time jimmy sorry <clears throat> let me talk about you again <clears throat> and jimmy said something to me one time he said there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great nothing looks great from beginning you only have the architectural plan which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people it is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation then everybody starts saying i used to know a jimmy i used to know promise i used to know pastor alpha don't no, i know them i remember when we we're taking gary and so on and so forth you see we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start somewhere along the journey we should see results but you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey what you ask for is the word of god that's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser where is the greatness with one palms where is the greatness when you cannot afford 100 naira to bab your hair? Where is the greatness where the only Bible you can afford is Gideon's International that was given free during evangelism? But I know he called me. I know there is greatness. I, I can't show you where it is. Where are the members? Where is the TV station? Where are the workers? They are in the loins of trust. I trust him. I trust him my obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them God is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results it's a joke nobody gets results as an inheritance you get up and start walking on that water is as you walk on the water it begins to part if you are waiting for it to part before you walk you will die there at the Red Sea because Pharaoh is coming Tell the people of Israel to move forward. The Bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils. Did you see his nose physically? It was a revelation that was given to a man. So he was standing and waiting for them. And I can imagine Moses coming. Over 2.5 million people. In the next five minutes you can be a dead man. For bringing such a stupid news from the presence of God. To people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of Pharaoh will come back to kill them and Moses said look this is what God told me move forward now Bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again know that i died believing and god says that's the person initiating me trust you 
you are seated on the throne. Be my land. You are seated on the throne. Listen. Listen. If you had seen me 15 years ago, there are people who know me. Some of the things you celebrate today was not there. Everything was in the loins of the foolishness. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Who told you you are the first to be given that instruction? Are you the first gentleman to be established? Oh, I'm taking it easy. You know, a, a job has not come yet. And uh, you know the way we are. Please! I'm not a stupid person. I understand responsibility. The key to fruitfulness is, Lord, I trust you. If I perish, let it not be that I perished in armed robbery, but I perished. The first crusade that we were going to, no money, no nothing. We had just about 20 people. I've shared it with you. Some of our ladies were climbing the tree, firewood. Yet God told me one day I will bless nations. And people are climbing firewood. Don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life. It's a, it's a costly statement. Never use your result or lack of it now to mean God did not speak. When God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. I'm bringing you intelligence tonight. Because there are many great men and women refusing to step out especially some of us brothers i don't just mean step out carelessly this fear factor must be broken nobody gives you guarantee when a generation of guarant of guarantors open an account i need a guarantor do business and i need a guarantor what if something happens move on with your life start the building project this risk averse fearful mentality is a sign of carnality it's not play it safe in the kingdom you play it as you trust him when god says move brothers and sisters you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving if it be thou bid me come and he said peter come come peter you've never done it but it does not mean it can not be done there are many of us today there are many of our families there are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now. God spoke to them 10 years ago. They had 100,000. God said, go, it can buy one tipper of sharp sand. Go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil. Say, no, 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 you know, we're intelligent people. We went to school. You don't build like that. And it's 20 years. The person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses. But somebody who cannot trust God. Listen, the raw material in God's economy is faith. 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 Not uncle. Not auntie. God uses men. But it comes from God through men to you. When you want it from men, you will die like a chicken. Are we together? Second key. Trust. Let me tell you something except it's not the god of heaven you are going to walk with no matter who assures you in the flesh get set for fatal disappointment god himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be cut and he will say walk have you seen how children walk no matter how you love your child a day will come you must allow that child walk and truthfully speaking the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person that does not mean walking is not a possibility you clean the wound and say stand up continue walking you don't tell people oh sorry you were building the house and rain washed it all you know oh, no the church has become a weak place no results because we cannot trust god i trust god though, except i don't hear him if God says move, there is no devil, no devil in hell, no devil in hell that can stop me. Because it is as you move that you commit you. Your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you. Go and ask any great man in the kingdom. Nobody gave him any assurance. 
all this auxiliary faith you see people i love god but what they mean is there is one uncle the uncle promised me that when it gets too hot i should run back no you are not standing by faith after two days you are disturbing everybody calling everybody and saying look i, I trusted god it's just that the way this thing is no you are not serious i mean if i perish i perish lord i would know you for myself now if you don't give me this rent let me sit outside and you would think it's a joke you are bringing your mattress outside to sit and god says ah this realm of trust gone are the days we used growing up we used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame god vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust god that far we never trust god that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, i can't remember when years ago when i was in kaduna I, I went to do something in kaduna and i was coming back to zaria my transport money was not complete i'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete i was hungry and i said i'm standing at the road here and there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport there is a little restaurant there and food there is 15 era why stand and die here at least let me satisfy one of the two i entered and i ate beans and yam 15 naira. i knew i was in trouble brothers and sisters i remember standing at that road and the spirit of god spoke to me he said stop a car and enter i stopped a vehicle and i entered to zaria i didn't say hey, please uh, i'm a man of god there is a call of god on my life it's not clear now but i want you to trust me if i rise you will rise too if i eat you will eat too that's what we are doing now and we call faith i started engaging a conversation with someone when we passed jaji and we were on our way coming then later the man the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him i knew i was in trouble but i knew i was not alone are we together now money can fail you men can fail you but his presence and his word will never fail never fail never fail if your confidence is in what you have in your bank account then something is really you are on your way to being frustrated if your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box or one one shoe or one whatever it is your confidence must be in the name of the lord his presence are you getting blessed tonight do you know the gentleman i was talking with just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um what that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what i had I, I can't remember whether i could bring me or not and the holy spirit told me to enter a bus again i entered a bus someone paid it i stopped at northgate with the same money i was at kaduna it was a message listen i've done stupid things in my life there are times that i believed god well now i don't know whether it's god that spoke to me or not but i remember trekking from area bz to first bank by faith believing there's money in my account they were paying workers and I joined them. And when it got to my turn, they said there was no money. I was not embarrassed. I was walking my faith. I didn't use that. I knew that one day, no problem. I went there and they said, sorry, are you expecting a transfer? I said, yes. It has not reflected. No problem. After wasting two hours of my time, I thought it was a waste. But now I know it was a school it was my school fees i was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith because there is nothing that god says today that cannot be done listen you don't grow just by reading the bible there must be an experience that will force you force you for as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people counseling is easy but one day god will say mr man you have been encouraging people to walk on that water and you have been sitting down today walk on this water and you have to stand up and walk everybody say lord i trust you
Say it, Lord, I trust you. Say it one more time, Lord, I trust you. Government cannot assure anybody. Insurance cannot assure anybody. This person talking to you is not daft. I understand these things. None of those things can ensure you. A man who trusts the Lord can watch his house on fire and other people are saying, hey, catch him, let him not have hypertension. And say, me? Hypertension? Where is the hand that built the house in the first place? I, I don't regret, but he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes. He said, I can't lose sleep because my God has infinite supply. Now, that's a man who has been worked on by the Spirit. High blood pressure, depression is a sign of not trusting God. Period. It's an uncomfortable truth, but know it. There are doctors here. Ask them. Young people now, you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself. Is it this room? Is it that? Are you, are you okay? He says, how can I be okay? Life. No. You don't trust God. So everybody wants this auxiliary thing. Ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now. Shoe, car, estate. It's a joke. Brothers are looking for a lady who is working to wage them while they are looking for a job. Look at what society is becoming. A pastor is looking for quality members. Now we select the sheep. It's not just God that brings the increase. God brings the increase we choose. We throw away some sheep to die. Then we choose the quality sheep. Make them whatever it is, a pastor or elder or whatever, to pin them down. And we say we have faith. That's nonsense. Faith is when weak people come to you like David in the cave of Adullam. And you tell them, look, I see the grace and the hand of God in you. And after three years, you produce signs and wonders. And they bless them. There are people today God has used me to lift. I will never be hungry till Jesus comes. Now you would think uh, he's just lucky. No sir. No sir. The beauty is always at the end of it. When you start out with God, brothers and sisters, you must trust him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, kill unbelief. Your ministry will depend on his word to grow your business stop harassing people to bless you give you money support you please believe in the name of the lord and let him trust you Hallelujah. So he told Abraham. Told Abraham. Abraham! This is the deal. I know you don't know me. I'm not the idol you are worshipping. Leave these people. Let's go. The Bible says, while he was going, Lot went with him. Followed him. Several things started happening in his life. And he said, look, let's separate. And he was on his way going. No child. Do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child? You have only waited two years and nobody rests again. Lord, you promised me that my husband is coming 2015. What happened with that vision that I saw that he has not landed till now? You have prayed, you have sown seed. You see, that's what you see. People, you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see. Where is my husband? Where is my breakthrough? And God says, Look, wait thou on me. I will bring my word to pass. And no, no, no. Oh God, look, I need time. It's, his age is not on my side. How old are you? Are you learning something? The price of trust. Trust is hard work. Let me tell you something about trusting God. There are times you will ask him questions he will not answer. You ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer. 
but he will never answer you on the matter that's God for you he is the God I serve you will counsel someone now and hear him expressly and counsel the person and say my God and say Lord I've been talking to you about this issue of my family then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and i'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet every time god is keeping quiet he's watching you every time god is silent i want you to know he's watching you you know that song please take it lower my voice I want to sing the song. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. Now, where is your child my child is in my trust coming my child is in my trust Penina is laughing at me don't worry my child is in my trust young man where is your God where are the results that at your age nothing is working you are making it look like serving God is a mockery don't worry there are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense. Then that's when he comes in majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see. But many of us don't trust him. Let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness. This ministry you see by the grace of God is a product of trust. There are some of you who have lost things lost loved ones against the prophecy god told you keep trusting are we together keep trusting keep trusting because when you hold on and trust him overnight he will route your breakthrough truth to a, another way that you never thought possible Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit tonight. Because there are people here. This your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven. You must learn to smile in the midst of the storm. It's a sign that you trust Him. There is nothing happening to you today that is new. Apostles have not eaten. There was a time in the Bible women were eating their children. You are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this, our baby, and eat. Do you know what the Bible says? Can a mother forget a suckling child? Two women ate one child. What hunger. Then it was a turn to eat the child of the other one. And then the other one said, no, no, no. And the, the other woman said, not so. And they met a prophet of God. And he said, by this time, tomorrow. Is the training that takes time the manifestation happens overnight don't ever call god jehovah sharp sharp during training you are joking sharp 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 is during manifestation not training this foolishness that flies around the body of the body of christ that is making us fools we want everything today once there is a little delay people say you don't have faith be careful many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit i've done a teaching here called the furnace of affliction many people are, are, are talking their nonsense let, let me tell you i'm old enough to know what speed and process is the path to the throne is the cross you will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne if what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross start running away because that's not a throne satan wanted jesus to dodge the cross 
and get to the throne jesus said not so there is a protocol so brothers and sisters when you are carrying your cross like jesus and they are saying physician heal thyself you healed others you raise others what is wrong with you now don't answer them jesus didn't open his mouth wasting his time he just continued carrying his destiny are we together now because let me tell you brothers and sisters behind every glory there is a story you are writing your story now don't be ashamed of it keep trusting don't be ashamed that you did it and lie no people get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ah. Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why I will lift up my voice and sing yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, don't rush seasons in your life. What you are running away from today, you will miss it tomorrow. What you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness. Hear what I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Don't run away from your pain. Carry the cross, pay the price, pay it honorably. Don't tell lies. I cannot afford Gary now. It doesn't mean I'm irresponsible. I'm a tighter. I trust God. I'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness. There are so many packaging and lies. You borrow 100,000, buy a shoe. Buy hair, buy a shirt, buy suit, buy Bible, buy iPad, and say I'm in ministry. Or okay? God, walk it slowly. You may you may take pap for one week. Don't be ashamed. If a visitor wants to visit you, don't beg your friend to go to his house and say that's my house. Don't be ashamed of your father. Your father is a carpenter. Your father is an iron bender. <coughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad. Don't ever, don't be ashamed of your pain. It is what validates your testimony tomorrow. When you rise and people say you faked it, someone say, I knew him. Oh, I knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking Gary. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Christians, hear me. I know that you watch those who were your classmates. They are going and God is saying, wait back. Don't, don't cry. Don't ever find yourself crying because one step with his voice will over. It will give you 10 years result overnight. Many people will insult me for what I'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path, but that's the path to the throne. That's where we follow to be where we are today. Rejoice not over me, my enemy stop this life of lies and packaging no the word is working whether you see results or not if you are sick go to the hospital with honor the healing ministry is still on your head it will come it will manifest god told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations and three years into the ministry you have 20 members don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people why fake what will eventually be real lord i trust you oh i trust you i trust you i trust you and i rejoice i'm not ashamed of my pain i'm not ashamed of where i am if all i can take today is gary i take it with honor and pride if you visit me you will join me taking that gary if you think you are too big no problem i honor you but don't rush my seasons let me go through it 
let me go through it i know we started ministry together now you have 1000 members i have 10 members our anointings are not the same the higher the anointing the deeper the call the higher the anointing the more the greater the weight unhealthy comparison all kinds of things destroying the body of Christ when you want a genuine anointing you must be ready to dig deep you must be ready to dig deep there are times God will tell other come to sin other ladies will be moving and God will say you stay back and you say God you have started with me again God said just walk with me see let me tell you if your work with God does not cause you to ask questions, you are not working with him. Because you, you walk with God one day and say, God, what is this? Then he keeps quiet. You are reaching your breaking point. Because a day will come, you say, Lord, whether you ever bless me again or not, since I've come this far, I've, there's a way you enter fire, it burns you, there's nothing to burn again. What made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today. That's spiritual maturity. That's why you see men, somebody persecutes you and says, Pastor Alpha is not, a, he's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it. You have sat in that fire long enough. That fire has roasted every flesh. There's nothing left there again. This overconsciousness, the need to explain yourself is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence. Many people see manifestations like this, like what is happening. They desire it. They put their hand on their head and then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you paid for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, I know you love yourselves but God will isolate you and put you it's amazing a husband and his wife can be married but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves that's the dealings of God that's why you must be sensitive that's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons a time will happen you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor don't think he's stupid it's not depression it's a season even him he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him and women like knowing my husband what is it that i'm not cooking well for he says look you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace just stay there when i win i will let you know and the man says this is the valley of the shadow of death i can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there and you see him wake up Time to eat a delicious meal he just turns that plate upside down and there's no appetite listen the training of a spiritual man is hard this is why you talk about them in the secret God will punish you in the open you don't know what is a covenant pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice for every time you cry and still trust him it's a covenant you are entering with him you may not know for every time he did not show up and people say where is your god and you frown back in shame and say lord i didn't have an answer for them but you are still my god it's a covenant you are entering somebody insults that altar is a joke i taught you on altars last week no sir That's why when you hear certain men of God talk, you think he's pride. You may not respect them, but respect the blood on their altar because there is blood there. God will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years. No, sir. You don't like tonight's message. It doesn't look very nice. I show you the making of spiritual people. You want fruitfulness? It's not just a key point. A, B, C, D. I'm leading you. Some of you, I'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season. God said it's your year of triumph. Welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start. It's not a cause. Listen, listen, hold on. There is a difference between temptation and trials. Listen, 
let me correct something here god never tempts people where you see tempt written with respect to god it was an error in translation temptation is a trap trial is a test is an exam god will never tempt you the goal of temptation is to destroy you the goal of a trial is to build you are we together now when those seasons come do not think it is unusual you want power you want grace you want to prophesy to someone you want to speak over people and let them come to testify brothers and sisters it's not suit and tie it's not designers it's a track record it's blood and tears and pain you want God to give you the wealth of nations overnight it will not happen just by luck everybody say trust <laughs> say trust Genesis 17 let's read from verse 1 to 6 thank you darling Genesis 17 quickly when Abraham was how old 90 years old Bible students how was he how old was he when God called him help me 75 90 years old Abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing and he was still walking God came and just reminded him hey, my God when Abraham was 90 years old and nine hundred minus one the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him I am the almighty God walk thou before me and be perfect you are reading to verse 6 and I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee what say fruitfulness I will multiply you after waiting so long I will still do it exceedingly verse 3 and Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying we are reading to verse 6 as for me behold my covenant is with thee Abraham remember the discussion we had in chapter 12 I came to remind you that it's still in force although your life has not seen it continue don't give up let me tell you how to know God is leading you sometimes in the midst of that fire help will not come it's a reminder you know how an alarm is tan 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 I know that fire is roasting you but just calm down I'm still alive God where are you I've always been there watching you so he's reminding Abraham thou shalt be a father of many nations just an updated translation of Genesis 12 read on neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham but thy name shall be called what Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee, verse 6. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Abraham, continue. Abraham, continue. It's been five years, oh God every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away god says i know exactly what i'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and god says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing i can tell you the dealings of god with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to god has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not god's way you will leave that child there that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born it is the giving birth that will bring people to you they won't just come to visit you for nothing 
except God has not spoken you will see triumph this year forget whatever it is that is happening except the God of heaven has not spoken you will see it happen I trust him I trust him I trust him trust him show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest i wish i didn't have to preach this today i wish i could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness is just drop money receive an impartation let it roll you on the ground and all of a sudden listen this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny there tonight there's no male and female if you want to pass through that road you are genderless when it comes to that that deal you won't say reduce the training because i'm a woman there is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit you will pass through don't let your tears stop you. <clears throat> you may cry, oh, but continue. God is speaking to someone. Don't let your tears ever stop you. Don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say, I thought you claim you are called. And then because of that, you now say, okay, let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people I'm called. God didn't send you. You are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation you are joining them together to kill yourself no. satan came when jesus was hungry and thirsty and said if you are the son of god turn this stone to bread he had the power to make it happen he said no i don't have to prove it the voice has already declared it with power that i'm the son of god trust 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 submission brokenness then the next step trust please sit down let me give you two more and then we'll pray the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation write it down the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation when you trust God and you begin to walk with him he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation brings you into not just an awareness but um how do i put it now it is it's really the word intercourse is the word koinonia a sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware you become an expression of it the spirit of revelation God begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of God you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down on that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation 
insight insight is very important if you must bear fruit listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you have been reading it you recited it when you were in sunday school but now that you are really in the valley of the shadow of death that scripture means a lot to you i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and the word comes with light I remember the time we gave an instruction to dance i know that many people didn't do it do you know why because there's no need for it in their life you see if i give you touch light in the daytime you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is but if nepa takes light you'll be looking for your phone the slightest light you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it it is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for they won't appreciate it you know growing up in ministry i always wondered why in pastors conferences when a man of god is preaching he can say something simple and you see pastors crying they are usually the ones standing up when a man of god is preaching and someone there is just laughing and say guy this man has energy to be standing up then the person laughing now marries a pastor you see that and after five years of hellfire the next time they go for a conference they say let's wave our hands the person is rolling jo wave your hands to god and say, i can't wave my hands oh god wave my hand is what i do in my room i will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation some of you what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today the holy spirit will store it in a bank it will be after four years huh four years one night you will pant after this message you will find it you will gasp for it you will borrow phones borrow lantern and sit down and listen to it the price of revelation the bible say buy the truth everybody say the truth is costly say it again the truth is costly yes it will cost you time listen you don't attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you respect to love a thing is to find it desirable to respect a thing is to find it valuable there are two different things you never attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you honor what you respect to love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable an emotional connect but to respect a thing is to find it valuable it's a right for these words are faithful and true i've been a student in the school of revelation this bible you see when i'm lying down to sleep is on my bed when i wake up is following me wherever i am. forget how old you are seeing it like this this bible has I've worked with this Bible for a while and I have found secrets therein. Secrets that can turn any man to become every word that God spoke concerning him. Nobody will spoon feed you. Thank God for devotionals. Thank God for um, Esau. Thank God for concordances. But brothers and sisters, if you want to know God, you want to grow in the word, you have to sit down. This spoon feeding of believers now I, of course I'm, a, I'm I'm not I'm not against access to devices and things that will help us but there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time I'm too busy I'm too busy 
then you see your life nose diving they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your bible only on friday during koinonia you close it on friday only to open it on friday again or on sunday that's not a good testimony let me tell you you will need to be serious with the word of god this is like a treasure chest your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever sing your Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing now for joy. I will see all the wonders of your word, and I will forever see your way. Whatever you spend time with, you become that thing. You spend time in a beer parlor, you become a drunkard, you don't become a, a pilot. In a beer parlor you spend time in a beer parlor you become you spend time playing games computer games you become a computer game professional you spend time in the farm you become you don't become a doctor you spend time in his presence you become an envoy that's what happens a testament that the word of god is alive spend time in his presence don't say i'm busy doing what god gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry pray twice hallelujah psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says they know not please give it to us psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course I want us to look at verse 5 in Amplified. If it's possible, please give it to us. If it's not possible, then we'll just go. Let's look at it. I want you to see the way Amplified puts it. The magistrates and judges know not. Neither will they understand. Listen. They walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. And then he says, all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking. Please go back to King James. Verse 6 says, Have I not said, regardless of your state, it does not change my prophecy. Your lack of revelation and understanding robs you, but my prophecy still remains the same. Have I not said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7, tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall 
like one of these princes so I have said you are gods but it doesn't mean you will manifest it between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation understanding the working knowledge of the word the epignosis we call it many times God delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are you are going to be working with like tools God delays your lifting to help you understand these laws you don't learn these laws when you are on stage no life is very unforgiving for the unprepared so he delays you a bit yeah. and keeps you so that you will learn it you never knew that praise was a weapon you thought it was something they do before messages come and then in that cave of Adulam the spirit of revelation comes to you and says look praise is not just about singing songs dancing is not just about moving your body clapping is not just about making sounds and he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit your laughter is a mystery in the spirit and all of a sudden you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of God tells you laugh now because you know this law you will not think you are you are you are you are mad you will laugh do you know in Psalm 2 let me show you something about laughter laughter is a mystery the irony is that every time God wants to judge he laughs before he starts judgment Psalm 2 give it to us why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing next verse the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us verse 4 he that seated in the heavens shall do what help me shall do what if we ask promise come if I ask promise to stand here and I say promise talk to us and all of us start laughing at him I mean real laugh some of you the way you laugh if somebody he can even cry just watching you laugh now imagine all of us keep laughing at him what do you think will happen to him let me tell you something about laughter laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil it's a it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know the bible says, rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice when you see people under the anointing you see them laughing you know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing they are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves they are cleaning their powder and they are, they are instead of them to rejoice whatever made the holy ghost to make you laugh don't you think it's a good thing because when god laughs start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders It's a ministry where as you are speaking there is a grace for performance it's a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of God are we together now I'm explaining it to you so you see she's not the only person who will laugh you'll see people laugh all around but it is by the spirit you can't sit down and be laughing like this that's a beautiful lady if she should watch herself laughing like that she will stop so this is by the spirit it's all right let's let's continue after laughing after laughing what do you think you will do then she shall speak to them in what so that laughter was not just because he's happy he's laughing at what he as a as a principle before you know how somebody's about to beat you <laughs> let me just smile that's what god is doing there 
it's in your Bible I'm showing you mysteries mysteries that all, that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression ask doctors is the absence of laughter when two people are fighting what's the first thing that disappears not love laughter laughter so you turn your way I turn my way and the devil is happy but all of a sudden you see your result or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people and your name is on the list we are being eyeing you we are hoping to drive you and now that we are found and you just tell him God bless you sir you say I, I'm talking and you are still smiling no no I'm not smiling at you sir I'm just God is faithful I'm smiling because I know my God is alive not a sarcastic laugh but a laugh in confidence a brother comes and said I've changed my mind I will marry you again it's okay God be the glory you can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes just do it it's a mystery it's not about I feel like you are engaging a mystery when you tight you don't feel like you are moved by that revelation listen there are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing the Bible says, a merry heart a merry heart not just a merry mouth not just a merry faith your heart can laugh too your heart can be happy and it will show I'm not talking of this clownish thing you can be happy the joy of the Lord this depression that many of us are carrying you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny you never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling God is alive two of us can't be awake if he's awake I sleep And then judgment follows immediately there are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you and laugh before God and say Lord I've cried but I won't cry again and laugh before him switch to dancing switch to praise musician or not if you cannot sing find this high Igbo praise high Igbo praise those people did not produce that album for money you, you you see the consecration in their lives you know they meant it the, the the scriptures they quote before the song starts that's that's called warfare praise don't let people tell you there is no such thing right psalms 149 let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands there is a warfare dimension of praise when all else fails switch to praise dance your life and turn every hell around the same way Yoruba people dance before a rich man they play drums and dance he wants to enter his car they call his name and shake their head and dance before you know it he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for was it not a lady that danced before Herod what is it about her dance she danced before Herod and removed the head of a prophet what is troubling you is not a prophet. Can I remove the head? Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith. But why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oyedeko said, he danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. Do you use a weapon just because you like it? You use it for efficiency. 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 Knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. So you know what to do. Your rent is expiring. That's not the time to pray. Wrong spiritual approach. No. It's too late. You would have been praying since you saw the signal. You have been having a lot of dreams. The moment it is quarter to shape, don't pray. Dance. Rejoice. Please, learn this thing. I'm teaching you the weapons of war. He said, with wise counsel, make war. Dance. Quarter to shape. Get one koinonia message. Get one worship team people. Come and give them honorarium. Let them record something and sing and dance. Put it in your pocket. If all your phone has is movies and games, you are not ready for life. 
you must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes you know the song already you bring it out hallelujah and you watch battles turn around overnight overnight battles turn around overnight listen you want to be fruitful the longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge spiritual intelligence knowledge you have trusted God you are humble but let me tell you the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester you see that it's a product of many things God's course is not three credit load it is your desire that can turn it into three credit six credit you can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class and the next class is two years you stay there God's classes is not like a an exact period of three three months no way you can be two years in a class he will give you break then you do another elective and call you back not to a higher course the same course let's continue Lord I thought we finished no we finished what let's continue but when you are done you will see the value of that thing for a student you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during exam and make up in the school of the spirit you miss one class that class you have missed will show in your destiny that lecture you did not attend the floor will be very clear in your destiny God's God's dossier for attendance must be hundred percent even if you have graduated and you have 89 percent you must complete that remaining that's why some of you will be embarrassed that after many years you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic just walk with him walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you you think that you have finished the issue of the flesh and then one day as a great man of God God calls you for a fresh lecture and the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh and you start again don't fight him be humble and stay say Lord help you thought you have overcome loss for money and then after 20 years of ministry God asks you to go for a retreat and you don't talk about pride whatever God says I just want to kill the influence of mammon and you say Lord I thought when I started with you say we didn't finish that course I only gave you a break or you stop attending lectures but now that you are ready to come back you don't do superstar with God if you miss lectures for 10 years the day you meet with God again, you go back and continue from where you started. Now, men don't expect you to go back. This is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again. Someone was a secular, for instance, a secular musician. Are, are we together now? And then the guy gets born again. And then you bring him to church. And he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life. Then you make him music director. No way. If he comes to church, he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know God that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impart spirituality hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when God gives the green light Look at David. David was in the wilderness. And God kept training him with the sleep. The moment it was time to destroy Goliath, he went with confidence. When you shake in the time of battle, it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals. Are we together now? And he defeated Goliath effortlessly. My personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that i will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill god's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that i coined out that's the name of the system of god's operation he operates in mysteries matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 11 it has been given to you 
we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know someone looks at you and says promise you will never rise in this life that person is not just making an empty statement that person is speaking on the strength of something maybe divination you don't just stand and say it will never happen it will happen until you have a mystery and understanding something you know that can oppose it are we together now yes if i push this guy he should fall down but if he's stronger than me he can create another force that will resist whatever i'm trying to do then he will stand you don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of christ if you know you have power come and kill us in the village and you hear silence no answer the only thing you see is that after one week the only thing you can do is to see you can't talk you can't stand you can't stand up you can't walk that was the answer from the realm of the spirit to you and saying be careful make sure you see god before you stand before pharaoh but by the grace of god with the training you are receiving here let me tell you i pity whoever rises against you one dance one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of god will crumble that person to his knees i tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithes and say lord i am a titan i am a titan i stand as a family we are titans my business is a tithing business devourer i rebuke you and satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a titan and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain what do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you do you know there is something you can engage please everybody say after me excuse me say after me in the name of jesus what i need to do in the face of danger in the face of challenges i receive access to it it is costly to stand stupefied watching life not knowing what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do jesus himself knew what to do you find out that you've been married six months people are asking you madam we are not seeing anything don't worry don't start getting angry and saying what is your business no just say lord i give you thanks one year two years three years it looks like no child is coming don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying they are laughing at me no father i give you praise start practicing the law of honor you see pastor alpha and his wife and their child what do this child want oh this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change i told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging some of us have been sitting waiting if you are waiting to know what to do then that's wise if you are waiting for things to change apostle nobody is coming to marry me engage engage do something engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere <laughs> to engage means find someone who has married find a family find one mother somewhere you see our mothers all around one day you can find a mother package five for life package something wrap her and say mommy please i see that you are married with seven children they are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life i've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be trading for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may god bless you i bless you 
I remember it was Pastor Corey De Komaya that was sharing a story. He has twins, and um, um, was Bishop Aremu of Living Faith. You know, I think they have twins too. And one time, his wife was with the wife of Bishop Aremu, and then she looked at her and said, "You, Seth, uh -uh, you've not given birth to, you've not given birth again." And she said, "Mommy, no." And she took her veil and stoned her with it. Say, "Take twins, Joe, like joke." That's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are carriers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that where, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira i don't know how one tier how much one tier of gari is you buy it buy lollipop for the children you don't even have to tell them that's why you came just like boy take once they open your lollipop and they're taking start rejoicing they are engaging a mystery brothers and sisters those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain you enter a place to start a ministry nobody knows you you are a young minister find the greatest ministry there orthodox or pentecostal quietly go and worship with them whether you believe what they are saying or not sit down under that atmosphere when you worship with them try to see if you can gain access to the man of god if you cannot put a small seed and sow, that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you're a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is it's a lie let me tell you the truth there are people look at me i say it with all humility there are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever it will never return till jesus comes make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling there are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials don't sit down and say i'm we are all young people we're not i'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper god's way very few people in the kingdom prosper god's way so when they hear people like us talking like this they think we're just talking nonsense there is a way god grants you prosperity that no devil no gate of hell will turn it around not up today down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we're going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um take the last part but then even if we stop here that's all right access to light the mysteries of the kingdom the secrets of champions there are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth strange results i have seen people with a grace nothing finishes in their hands they may not like promise was saying when he was raising the offering they may not 
be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing i'll talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace some things cannot be taught they are received but it's not just general anointing holy spirit come <clears throat> is locating people who are carriers of these dimensions it must be working for somebody close to you have the humility to see it a gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car i said really i said so what are you doing about it and he said he's saving i laughed i said that means you are not going to buy a car forever till jesus comes you see a young man and ask him you want to buy a land so what are you doing he said i'm i'm planning uh, for now i have hundred thousand you don't buy land by saving you buy land through favor whatever god gives you is not what you keep to buy land is what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level now many mainstream people again are going to insult me for this thing and don't forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people but i tell you this with the integrity of god psalm 45 44 verse 3 give us psalm 44 verse 3 let me show you how to acquire if god wants to give you grace god wants to give you land this is how it comes read if you're a christian want to read by their own sword uh-huh neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor this is how it happens this is how it happens there are graces you must tap into you don't have by default the baptism of the holy spirit will not bring those graces for you when you have revelation Part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern. Dr. Mike Mudo calls it wisdom. The ability to discern difference. Ah, I've been a roommate with promise. And I've noticed that my job pays more than his job. But he's happier, healthier with a lot of money. It's in my presence. I watch people bringing favor. It's a sign that there is a grace operating. Let me tell you something. It may be your husband. It may be your wife. It will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come Marcelina, if Marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor i can stand as an arrogant man of god preaching with no favor but through knowledge i want to be fruitful remember i want results i'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness I will discern how do you discern observation observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of god a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well there is a grace you are about to get married as a young couple go and meet them kneel down help her make pepper soup do whatever you do mommy bless us you say ah no don't worry my children don't allow all that greeting to distract you kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head and you you can sow into her life you can say marcelina sorry let me just help you and worship you. ah no i won't do this you are a great woman of god no even if you are the person that got that person born again with respect to what you want to receive you are the lesser so you must humble yourself to receive are we together and you tap into that grace and that mantle lands on your head you start producing extraordinary results i'm like a fisherman i know graces that are needed and where they are found and when i when i'm pursuing a grace i'm not embarrassed that's what took me to canaan land to go and meet bishop Oyedeko. That's what took me to Joss to go and meet Renard Bonke. 
you, you fish unashamedly. You don't receive impartation from colleagues. Promise, promise. We are, we are, uh, I remember when we were in secondary school. Can you bless me? I'm seeing something working in your life. What's it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize what he was doing. Praise God. There are people who are very foolish. Some of you, your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level, but you have not discerned it. You pass them every time. Mommy, I'm going for fellowship. May God help you. And she keeps wondering. When she was your age, 20 men were looking for her. You are almost twice her age. Nobody is coming. Tap into it somebody who lives in your neighborhood all he has is primary school certificate yet in your presence you are you are joining others to say his money is is charm because naysayers always find explanations once they see someone blessed they have to find something and say that thing here eh, you see it eh, jimmy just leave that guy. That guy is, uh, is a, there is a spirit. Don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there, there are spirits all around. This is the end time. Be careful. Be careful. Don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings. When you find out that there is a grace, it doesn't have to be from a high man of God. Some of you this night, if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day, in the midst of that fight there is a grace tap into it be the one to cook the food tomorrow what's the occasion i noticed three of you in this room there is the hand of god on your life sir i notice there is no week that passes without you being favored i want to tap into you may not have money you have polish you can polish a shoe you don't have money you have soap you can wash find one socks whether it's clean or not soak it again and wash it lord this i'm washing every nonsense out of my life results results your father may be a harsh man your mother may be a harsh man but you have never seen them beg for bread there are results in that area look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it there are many people who want crowds look for mission agencies around there are mission agencies there are orphanages you want god to make your children correct that their brains will be working well find an orphanage buy one bag of rice drag it there and meet them the children may not tell you thank you they may not even recognize you you are not doing it just for that tap into it. i'm showing you how i live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing. It's like a charm that has called all the blessings. They start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves. The principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life. Listen, if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job, start engaging mysteries now. Otherwise, you will never get one. Please hear me. Are we together? Especially for brothers. I'm waiting for a job. You will wait forever. Engage mysteries. If you don't know, ask questions. You want a st to start a business. All you have is capital and a brain. You are going to lose. Let me advise you. Don't even waste your time to start. There are spiritual things we engage. Go and listen to my message. Spiritual intelligence. Settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start. Anytime you are in trouble, don't start running to meet people physically. Settle it in the secret place. You are in trouble. The landlord is about to come and throw you out. There is trouble. Your parents are going to court. Leave all those. Those things are shadows. Enter the secret place and correct it. 
if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of god i've taught you about the mercy of god the mercy of god will turn is is god's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 cgpa 4.7 you think these things are just guesswork no you engage mysteries we are going to pray our time is gone but i want you to cry for fruitfulness and i want you to cry for discernment discernment to know how to tap into graces don't sit down and be barren i've taught you brokenness i've taught you humility i've taught you trust i've taught you revelation you must camp around the knowledge of the mysteries and then i've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the god of heaven Pray. Hallelujah. Just three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord supernatural supply of grace to trust you i will never doubt you again whether i understand what you are doing or not i banish complaint from my life i banish grumbling from my life lift your voice and pray supernatural grace to trust pray Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Shena malada manana bos. Lena na masena na. Shena na na. Shena na masibra gana balana 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 balana. I want to be extraordinarily fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. Shabra kata kosoto paka shabra gana balana bal. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, the mysteries I need to know in this season for the next level of my results. Show me. Give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Show me, show me, open my eyes. Make a parado kapraska dabalakaya. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Show me the mysteries of wealth. Show me the mysteries of increase. Show me the mysteries of fruitfulness, the mysteries of restoration, the mysteries of peace. Show me the key, O oh God, to making things work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, look up. Let me tell you sincerely, and I want to tell you this with all humility. Most of the graces you will need to produce the results that you need are available in this house. It's just that many of us have not had the discernment to tap. I'd like you to cry to God and say the grace that is deficient in my life 
that is responsible for this stagnation i open up my spirit to honor i open up my spirit to honor lift your voice pray this with wisdom the grace for the gift of man the ministry of helpers Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I know that our time is gone, but I want us to pray. Listen, I want you to know that this house is a house of mantles. This house is a house of strange graces. You know, just last week the Lord did something in my life that He did something in my life that almost brought tears. I said, God, what is this? What is this? What are you doing to me? And the Lord spoke to my ears and said, I would do it to anybody who understands this. It's not the individual that is making it happen. It's what is on you that is producing it. Listen, I want you to pray before I pray for you. Don't be arrogant. There is something deficient in your life that can cheaply bring you to seasons of results you have seen it work in this life you have seen it work in this place lift your voice and cry from your heart and say lord i must tap into it lift your voice and pray. days on Sunday and every time these seasons come usually I don't think of what people do for me I just think of the faithfulness of God in my life and I kept thinking meditating all through this week and I just felt that if there is anything I can do to the body of Christ is to pray for you you have prayed for me but I want to pray for you there are things I carry I've seen very few people carry it and I don't know why. You don't have to kneel down and stand. I want you to believe it. I have seen certain things in my life and I've seen very few people and it has pained me because these things are for the taking. There are dimensions of graces but this, this pride, please help me to this one, this pride, honestly, brothers and sisters, hear me. If you believe in this prayer that I'm praying for you, it will change your life. This thing you see is an election of grace. I may be a young man, but there is an ancient mystery on this person you see. I want you to believe it. You 
have taken all the shame you've taken all disappointments you've taken all the pain you've taken all my sorrows you've taken all my weakness you've taken all my sufferings you've taken all my tears You've taken all my weakness. Nina Yimaka, Nina Yimaka, Sujana, Nina Yimaka, Nina Yimaka. Don't don't sing. I'm praying for you. You've taken all my sadness. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my poverty. You've taken all my dishonor. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my struggles. You have made them yours. You have made You've taken all my sadness You've taken all my tears You've taken all my sorrow You've taken all my weakness You've taken all my struggles You've taken all my fears You've taken all my weakness You've taken all my mountains You've taken all those mountains You've taken all my mountains I give you I give you I give you My highest praise I give you I give you Lord For everything you've done in my life Lord I give you I give you, I give you my highest praise. I give you. I pray for you. The power to prosper. There is such a grace called the anointing to prosper. I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle. You have been part of this ministry you have been part of this vision from the depth of my spirit i release that mantle on your life now take it now take it now the power to prosper the power to prosper the power to prosper the power to prosper i release it from the depth of my spirit The Lord has given me uncommon honor and influence. Honor is a mantle. It can be put on people. I decree and declare that everyone connected with this vision, everyone connected with this grace right now, as I speak, may that mantle of honor practically let it land on your life now. Take it now. Strength, honor, grace for influence. I know our time is gone, but just pay attention. You are receiving something that will change your life. I decree and declare. There is no time in my life where I have needed helpers and men did not rise. There is a grace that can bring helpers from anywhere. I prophesy to you, let helpers start appearing in your destiny from today. Let helpers start appearing from your, in your destiny from today.
hallelujah I am a product of encounters both the ones I prayed for and the ones I did not pray for encounters have brought me strange graces encounters of angels encounters with the realm of the spirit I open you up to a water in the realm of the spirit begin to have encounters from today receive visitations receive visitations receive visitations visitations of angels visitations of the spirit visitations in visions visitations in dreams may they bring you scriptures may they bring you revelations Listen, a lot of the impartations I've received have come to me in visions. Where literally in visions, I receive impartations. I have met with the saints, the spirits of just men. This is not diabolism. I have received from men in the flesh, but I've received from men in the spirit. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, every mantle, every grace that must make the supernatural begin to work in your life, receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Hear me? Everyone in ministry here from today, I launch your ministry to a realm of strange signs and wonders. Strange signs and wonders. Strange signs. A performance. A performance of the word. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone here. Called into the area of business. Called into the area of finances. Or anyone trusting God to lift you. There is a grace that establishes men. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Between now and the next 60 days rise to a level you have never seen in your life rise to a level you have never seen in your life hallelujah listen listen i've shared with you the story i don't talk too much about myself hallelujah it was last year right here in three weeks god gave me a gold mine in three weeks god gave me a gold mine 18.7 hectares of a gold mine i never saw it once till i got it there is a grace that empowers men you better believe it i stand here tonight in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you enter into prepared blessings enter into prepared blessings enter into prepared blessings enter into prepared blessings Beyond your certificate, enter into prepared blessings. Beyond your job, enter into prepared blessings. One of the things I've seen in my life is supernatural defense and protection. There are many of you, the moment you are in trouble, nobody arises to help you. You sit there, you fight alone and die alone. Are we together now? I want to pray for you. This one, I've not seen many people walk in that grace. There is a grace that immunes you from trouble. We live in a wicked world. You don't have to look for anybody's trouble. Someone just comes and makes nonsense out of your life. Nobody to speak for you. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God of Israel who has defended me, and defended this ministry from today i don't know what brings shame to your life i create a wall of defense around you receive that grace from today in the name of jesus christ i pray for you quarter to shame may help arise for you The last prayer I'm going to pray for you is for speed. Some of us are too slow. And it's not just by God. 
something that will take you two days will take you six months it's not a testimony again i want to prophesy speed he must land on someone he may not come on everybody but lord god i pray in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i'm praying may somebody here carry this mantle of speed in the name of jesus speed of performance speed of performance speed of performance speed of performance hear me whoever fights you in the name of jesus the god that i serve that person goes down instantly from today i don't know what has left your life you are crying till now because it looks like when you miss that thing you miss everything jacob's cutter mantes calabria tacososia jebreze sutos comaria takata every day second take it take it take it record to show for photos embrantas calapa shadia mareke tos conte take it take it every to conto perekete everything that left your life in the name of jesus and by the power of prophecy i call it back to your life right now i call it back to your life right now i call it back to your life right now hallelujah and for everyone who is a worker in this ministry in the name of jesus i decree to you let this be the season of extraordinary results in your life you are a worker in this ministry i put that anointing on your life you are a worker in this ministry i put it doesn't matter whether prayer department worship team ushering whatever i decree and declare may this grace speak bodily now bodily now bodily now let it answer now to your life Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.